So, um, questions? Joan, you just spoke, didn't you? Okay. Are you awaiting to speak? Now is it? Right? Yeah, that's right. I was waiting to speak. Um, Joan Roughgarden, uh, two things. Uh, thanks, Mel, for a talk with some humor, <laughs> which is uh, the uh, first thing I want to say is I, that. I with Harry Frodo, that is, is that. Um, it wasn't worth living. The first thing I'd like to say is that evolution in Christian faith, unlike Francis Collins' book, is in no way an attempt to convert anyone. No way. But it is not an attempt to convert anyone or to proselytize in any way, shape, or form. Okay. It is specifically, and it says so up front, directed to an audience that for whatever reason already considers uh, itself a community of faith. So it's specifically directed to people who already associate with a Christian tradition in particular, and it's about what evolution is and tradition in particular, and it's about what evolution is and uh, an attempt to explain evolution in terms that are friendly to people who already, for whatever reason, identify with that tradition. And it yeah. is definitely I not. Think, I think that's, that's fair, but, but yeah. it also takes the position that, that um, science and, and religion, science and faith are reconcilable. Oh, right. y yes, takes that position, but that's not an attempt to sell anyone on the desirability. If we could actually deal with the larger points as well, rather than specific yeah. uh, uh, the, the individual books. May I continue? Sure. Yeah. Um, the other point uh, is to Sam, and, and uh, all I would like to say, I mean, because it's getting quite tedious, frankly, mm -hmm. as we're going round and around on this, is that um, you've got to deliver the goods on um, producing uh, a moral system which could be entertained as an alternative to the moral systems that might uh, improve from religious traditions. That is to say, someone who is an arbitrary citizen, let's say, has a choice of whether or not um, to commit moral um, effort into um, uh, rectifying uh, the problems that exist in the current moral in the current religious traditions, or in starting a new one from scratch. And if you want to start a new one from scratch, which, as you know, I am very skeptical of, you got to do it. And I think that it's gratuitous to conduct um, uh, a continuing and scathing condemnation of religion, regardless of whether it was correct. It's just simply gratuitous, because I think that it's necessary actually to produce the program that you would recommend um, we contemplate mm. as an alternative. Yeah, okay, thank you. Well, I think that's easily done. It's not a matter of inventing a religion or any other system from scratch. It's a matter of adopting the same standards of reasonableness we rather effortlessly adopt and insist upon in every other area of our lives on questions of morality and spiritual experience. If, if I go into a cave and pray to Jesus and I have, I come out the most loving person anyone has met and I, I can tell you about the phenomenology of this experience. I pray to Jesus and I realize that I, I love my neighbor as myself and, and um, this is incredibly rewarding and now I'm just the nicest guy to be around you've ever met. Okay, this is evidence for something. It's evidence for the plasticity of human experience. It's evidence for the consequences of using attention in certain ways. We can talk about this. We can explore this landscape without making the unjustified and intrinsically divisive metaphysical leap to this proves that Jesus was born of a virgin and there's no no other name under which anyone is saved, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not denying that that there is a, a wealth of experience that is traditionally only had within a religious context that we will want to explore. If, if ritual is important to us, if ritual is doing some really necessary work for us, we should understand that. And I, I suspect it might be doing necessary work for us. Uh, but and if I can just segue for, from that to, to a brief response to the other two presentations, uh, I'm very grateful to your presentations. I think it's, um, I mean, 
the, the distance between us is precisely why I think a conference like this is important. Um, and your presentations, as I think will not surprise you, really typify for me what I think the problem is in our discourse. I mean, the kinds of, and this, if, if I can defend my own work and, and Richard's as well, uh, what is new about what I think we are doing, the kind of criticism we're launching, uh, which you don't find in, in Voltaire or any other predecessors who have been stridently opposed to religious dogmatism, is that uh, we are talking quite candidly about how the kinds of apologetics you just invoked uh, stand on a continuum with religious extremism, that, that, it, that it provides immense shelter for the, for the status quo in our world, and it provides a tacit endorsement of the religious divisions in our world. And I'll give you an example of why I think that's so. Uh, I find it very instructive, Jim, and, and uh, telling that you will take uh, Martin Luther King's word for why he's doing what he's doing. You know, he's, he's marching for civil rights because of his Christian faith. But you will not take Osama bin Laden's word for why he's doing what he's doing. Uh, I would never be tempted to deny that, that nobody ever does good on the basis of what their religious belief, uh, what they believe about God. Uh, I have not denied that. Uh, in fact, I, I'm willing to admit that there are certain circumstances in which people will do heroically self-sacrificing and compassionate things and maybe only do them to that degree on the basis of irrational dogmas. Uh, but uh, that is an exception, and I think uh, it's time we talked uh, quite candidly about the kinds of, of horrendous things that are, that are only possible uh, in a world where... In, incredibly destructive technology is proliferating by the day. Uh, the kinds of, of, of uh, terrible things that are only possible by, uh, by virtue of religious dogmatism. Uh, a few more piecemeal responses. This idea that you can't take away people's hope. I, you know, you could stand at the Nuremberg rally and admonish me in the same vein. Sam, you can't take away people's hope. I mean, these are, no one would be t t tempted to defend Nazism as something that is is giving people such meaning that it's you know we have to we have to study the Nazis to see if they really hate the Jews are they really being motivated by their hatred of the Jews are they really being motivated by their racial dogmatism um, uh, it seems to me uh, the height of of uh, I mean, really a terrifying degree of sci of intellectual paralysis if we are not going to concede that specific consciously held beliefs uh, are operative in, in human behavior. And you mentioned Stalinism and, and Nazism. I mean, the fact that you could bring out that canard as a sign of one of the, as a counterpoint to the criticism of religious dogmatism, as though this were a sign of um, reason run amok. You know, the, the reason gave us Auschwitz and, and uh, the gulag and the killing fields. Well, what, uh, that, I, that, that's, that is a fantasy. Can I just inter intervene? Okay, I but, never said anything remotely well, like that. Okay, uh, yeah. but uh, just to finish it, the problem that we're criticizing here is dogmatism. And I, no one's saying that the only form of dogmatism is, re is religious, but what you have invoked is a defense of one brand of dogmatism, religious dogmatism. Don't take away people's hope on this front. Uh, we, ha we, we need more information to know if dogmas are ever operative. And I would be the first to criticize the, not the dogmas of the Nazis or the dogmas of Stalin. Uh, the problem is divisive dogmatism that is empowering to, to uh, a mob mentality. And, and, there's, and there's one kind of dogmatism we are loath to criticize. And it is the dogmatism that goes under the name of faith. Do you want to respond? Well, I, uh, well, I'll respond to the parts that are relevant to me. First, uh, you won't be surprised, Sam, to, uh, since you think that I'm part of the problem and you're the solution, that I think you're part of the problem. Uh, in fact, I think you, you and Richard are, are remarkably um, apt mirror images of, uh, of, of the extremists on the other side and that you polarize each other and that you uh, that you and they po polarize each other and that you generate more fear and hatred of uh, of science uh, by doing so <clears throat> as for uh, not taking away the patient's hope I, i'm really tired of the invocation of this this thoroughly specious analogy uh, to uh, to nazism it's uh, you know it's just the uh, uh, 
it's an abusive use of, uh, of, of the example. Uh, there is nothing in common with uh, the vast majority of, of people of faith's feeling and thought uh, and uh, the, that of the people in the Nuremberg rally. Of course, there are rallies in Tehran today that are uh, actually quite like Nuremberg rallies, and I'm worried about them too. But it, it, you, haven't, you haven't taken up the, 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 the more serious challenge. For example, uh, how is it that religion uh, played a relatively small role in the calamitous 20th century? Uh, in which scores of millions of deaths occurred because of uh, um, nationalism, um, because of, of uh, communism, because of fascism. Uh, you, you just want to wave your hand and say, oh, well, that's religion too. Well, I mean, you yourself said the other day, this, the core of science is not quantification, it's intellectual honesty. I do not consider that an example of intellectual honesty, to just wave your hand and say, well, uh, that's the, you just wave your hand and say, well, uh, that's religion too. It isn't religion. It's something different. And we, we, uh, we already know that it's a bad thing because of, 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 uh, uh, of clear proof that it, did, uh, that, that it did much more harm than good. Uh, and and you are unwilling to take, to take a, a, an, a, an empirical approach to the question of whether religion does or does not do more harm than good. It's, it's just not true. Um, to take that specific challenge, uh, that religion had not much to do with the, the great uh, travesties of the 20th century, uh, you take the Holocaust. Now that is genu generally argued as an example of a secular problem. Anti-Semitism in, in, in Germany at that moment was a, a sec an expression of a secular hatred. Now. Where do you get anti-Semitism? I mean, how is it even possible to have uh, the racial anti-Semitism that we had in, in the 21st century that is ubiquitous around the world that has justified the, the, uh, the existence of the State of Israel? So anti-Semitism has been manufactured stem to stern out of religion, out of, what, out of a thousand years of Christian fulminating against Just, the Jews. So you're, you're, okay, well, we, we can cite... It's, historical. it's not a historical. I, I do, well, I... Well, Anti-Semitism okay. precedes Christianity by a long time, Anti by centuries. Well, but, okay, Based well, on race and well, the, the, the religious designation well, becomes important with the rise of the Catholic Church. It's true. Centuries of, of, of anti-Semitism pursued by Christians did feed into the, the, the hysterical... Uh, uh, animosity toward the Jews in 20th let's century not, Europe. Let's not tangle. That, because, well, that's well, I not think, the same thing as saying that, well, it's, you know, it's really Let me just ask you one question then, okay? Let's say we, we're going to uh, resolve the dispute in the Middle East this way. We're going to offer the Jews, the Israelis, um, Oregon. You know, we get into our heads. This is, this is going to just, just solve the conflict. Why won't they accept Oregon? As, or get, 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 as prime a piece of real estate as you want to give them in the heart of the United States. Move over here, you'll, you, the, the, no more uh, suicide bombing, uh, give, give the Holy Land to the Muslims. One, do you think they would accept that? And two, and two why not? 